Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Georgia. So today I'm going to be reacting to something I have reacted to before, which is Family Guy. Now, I remember quite liking Family Guy compilations, but I haven't done it for a while, so I'm not really sure. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to come back to a bit of animation or cartoon, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's not really a cartoon, is it actually? It's like an animation show? Animation? I'm not really sure, but I'm going to be reacting to a video called Family Guy Dark Humour Compilation. Now, you know, I just want to see if I find it funny because today I'm in the mood for a laugh, you know? So, yeah, let's get on with the video. After all, I used to work the suicide hotline. I, I just can't take it. I discovered my wife's been cheating on me for a while and I just, I can't live like this. I have to kill myself. Doesn't it make more sense to kill her? You can count on me. <laughs> the same way NASA counted on me during the apocalypse. Do you know what? It's already started in this compilation, hasn't it? Doesn't it make more sense to kill her? I mean, that would be bad. You know, that would be bad. But he kind of has a point. I mean, I guess he's running a suicide hotline and that probably isn't helping, is it? <laughs> sense to kill her? You can count on me. The same way NASA counted on me during the Apollo 13 crisis. All right, I'm gonna need three coffins, mahogany with brass handles, three new daddies for the dead astronauts' kids, and a black suit for me. Sir, I think I know a way we can get them back. Is it hard? It might be. <laughs> yeah, we, we've kind of already decided we're going in this direction. <laughs> for years now, I've been planning on retiring at 45 so I can work on finding a cure for Alzheimer's disease. Peanut, are those testicles? Where did you get those? I don't remember! We've got to stick together, like that two-headed girl on TLC. Okay, who wants to taste it and who wants to smell it? I'm tired of living with Oh my ones. god. Remember when I tried to open that lemonade stand with Chris. All right, that'll be 10 cents. Chris, pour the man his lemonade. I can't. The lemonade tricked me and got away. <laughs> Lemons are God's children. We gotta find out where that party is and get Meg out of there. Oh, you're right. God, what happened? It seems like just yesterday she was born. Mr. Griffin, would you like to cut the cord? Sure. Okay, that wasn't the cord, and now you've got a girl. Don't be afraid to be honest with a girl and show her who you are. What? This show is too much. It's too much. I am sorry. Sometimes it is too much. And I'm like, oh my god. Like, I understand it's a dark humor compilation, but sometimes it is just too much, okay? <laughs> oh my Don't god. Don't be afraid to be honest with a girl and show her who you are. Wow. Thanks, Lois. That's the second best advice anyone's ever given me. I don't know, man. Jesus, Hitler, Christ sounds weird. So just go with H. Yeah. Well, for the next 72 hours, I'm going to be harder to find than a nice cat. You need me to clean out your litter box? <laughs> Mittens. Well, she's busy with a blood drop. <laughs> Maybe I can help. How about I read you this book? It's called Apathetic George. George used to be a curious monkey, but after a month in captivity, all he did was wait for food. The zoo people wanted him to mate, but he lost interest in that, too. Twenty years and millions of dollars in zoo revenue later, he died. Okay, I've had enough. <laughs> hmm, maybe this one. Hey, looking at you pretty normal, huh? No! Ah, fudge. Wait, I know! <laughs> I'll figure this out. The, the pieces are all there. I, I'll go home and figure this out. At least now no one's forcing us to watch those awful PBS documentaries. And now PBS presents <gasps> Albino Children Are Normal. So, with the exception of not being able to go out in the sun, you're completely normal? Yes. The moon is my sun. I like to call <laughs> beetles. Beetles are teachers. I sleep with a fork. That's what all the star athletes do. You know what? with this show. What I mainly feel about this show is that I just love how they make any joke, okay? They leave nobody out. They leave, do you know what I mean? Like, they will they will make jokes about anyone and everyone, and that's what I love about this show, because they just don't care. Whoever writes it, they just don't give a damn. They're like, do you know what? I'm gonna pick on everybody, because why the hell not? I guess maybe that's why they, the show, like, no one really cares about it, because it's like they kind of go at everybody. Do you know what I mean? They don't really leave anyone out, which I like, you know, because it means you can just laugh about everything and anything, you know, and that's great. Beatles are teachers. I sleep with a fork. That's what all the star athletes do. Ugh, I'm so sick of all the special treatment they get, even during school shootings. Kevlar vest. 
Kevlar vest. Hold on. Are you a starter? These are for starters only. I'll be a starter next year. <laughs> then next year, you can have a vest. This is trespassing <laughs> and it's against the law. Maybe we should just let the clam go and, I don't know, spend more time with our families. Yeah, I tried that. I just spent most of the time testing Chris to see if he's autistic. <laughs> Not overly affectionate. There you go. That's the spirit, buddy. There's a little bit of good in everyone. Except that president guy from the Hunger Games. He was pretty bad. This year, in addition to the Hunger Games, we're going to do the special Hunger Games. I'm Andy. I love you, Andy. <laughs> oh, my Come on, guys, God. Fight. This is Kevin's first birthday since he came home from Iraq. Why does Kevin always sit at the bus stop but never gets on a bus? Please don't bring that up. Don't bring anything he does up. Hey, you guys. You're right on time. Kevin just woke up screaming from his afternoon nap. Mom, it's my birthday and you invited your friends. All yours are dead. Uh, you're going to start dating soon. Probably good to get in the habit of chewing with your mouth closed. Doesn't bother me. I'm just, you know, one friend to another. Well, what, you got a problem with me? You think I'm gross? <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, this is what you are, and this is what I am. <laughs> It's been three weeks, and you haven't had a single job lead. And that's not true. I came really close with that job at the school. So what makes you want to be a crossing guard? I don't know. I just thought it would be cool to decide which kids do and don't get hit by a car. <gasps> Stella, I need you to go to Chicago on Thursday. I can't. This week is the Duff Gangs. <laughs> Oh my god, this has been a 12-minute round. Why does every fight have to go to the death? That's wild, <laughs> Stacy. I'm a 12-year-old girl, too. My name's Jenny. Want to come over to my place and help me move? Hey, you're not a 12-year-old girl. Neither are you, Jenny. Huh. <laughs> I guess we aren't so different after all. Yeah. You know, this isn't a whole lot of stuff. We can probably knock this out in an hour. Where are you going to go? I don't know. Somewhere far away. Maybe China. I hear they got NASCAR there now. Look at this note I sent off. Dear Pakistan, up yours. Love, India. Let's see what happens. <laughs> they did not need much. Boy, what a great day for a baseball game. Yeah, and these are the best seats in the house for catching home run balls. Oh, that'd be sweet. The only souvenir I ever got was at that stock car race. <laughs> oh my god! All right, I got the guy. <laughs> oh my god! Do you know what I love so so much actually about this show? Is their delivery? Like they deliver lines just so well, and like that's what I love so much about it. It's like the voice people who do the voiceovers, they deliver the jokes just so magnificently that you do just find it that funny. And then like the animation, how they edit it just makes it so much better. Do you know what I mean? It it meshes just so well. Like the visuals and then the voices playing the parts. It just, they blend amazingly. And I love that. You know, I love when a show has the perfect blend of humour and they have like the perfect people with great comedic timing. And just like, they say the jokes well. They deliver it well and I love that, you know? And it just sounds, it's funny because even though it's quite absurd and the things that come out of their mouths are pretty crazy and they joke about pretty bad things, I feel like it just, seems so natural like the way they deliver the lines it doesn't make it like it's funny because it's just it like that character just feels believable like that character would genuinely actually say that it's not just like you know a random character they made up and they're saying it to be funny it's like that character is actually saying that and that's what makes it so like funny and like lol someone's actually just said that kind of thing you know D does that make sense all right i got the guy i got the guy Oh, thank God. I really dodged a bullet there. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Ah, everybody makes mistakes. Even doctors. You forgot to I say... I forgot to say clear. Ew! What the piece you did on the invention of the guillotine. Ew! Oh, thank you. You know, half the time those things didn't really work. How was it, honey? Oh, they couldn't <gasps> finish. Oh, really? Yeah, I gotta go back tomorrow. Oh, well, I made cabbage for dinner. <laughs> That's yeah, so horrible. the ending to this day. <gasps> For example, here's what happened when we fertilized an egg from Shelley Duvall with a sperm from James Blunt. <laughs> oh, here's Hilary Swank and Gary Busey. 
Florence Griffith join her and Stephen Hawking. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough. I got more funny ones. I got Tina Fey and Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, I think we're fine. A lot of face stuff going on. <laughs> like people in massive debt. Well, honey, I've extended our line of credit and exhausted all our savings. We should be good for another month. Oh, that's great, honey. Well, what are we going to do next month? Well, I'll tell you what we're not going to do. Shoot all of our children and then kill ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that. I don't think you'll have any control over it. All right, Joe, let's lose the wheelchair and shoot this thing. Peter, I can't lose the wheelchair. I need it to move. <laughs> okay, yeah, but your character can walk. Peter, I'm handicapped. I can't walk. Okay, Chris, roll film and action. Joe, get out of the damn chair. Chris, get the cattle prod. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Should have taken the <laughs> shot, fat ass. Actually, imagine, like, actually imagine you're a hunter and that happened. That would be mad, wouldn't it? Like, that would actually be crazy. Like, that's never going to happen. I don't know why I'm saying that like it's going to happen. I'm like, wow, imagine that happening. That would be funny, wouldn't it? Like, it's actually going to happen. Georgia, that's never going to happen. But just imagine if it did. Like, imagine you're a, like, imagine you're a hunter and you went out and deer started beating you up with bats because you were hunting them and they knew it. That would be wild, wouldn't it, guys? Anyone, any hunters out there, that'd be wild, wouldn't it? <laughs> Fat ass. Ah, uh, you don't want to get involved with them religious groups. They believe in all kinds of weird stuff. If I believe in Jesus hard enough, I will not die. If I believe in Snake Jesus hard enough, he will die. <laughs> if I believe in Tree Jesus hard enough, both of them will die. Yay! Thank you, Tree Jesus! <laughs> Elephants have a long history of figuring stuff out. Like my great-grandfather, who invented the first marital aid. This gives me an idea. She's dead. Would an idiot have been able to rig <gasps> this rig to that rig? Peter, that's nothing. Oh, is it? <laughs> I died! I died! Oh, my God. Well, what are you doing up there? Enjoying heaven, Bonnie. <laughs> There's a gun in my nightstand. I'll be honest, it was nice to be acknowledged by the chief for once. Usually he's just reminded me that whatever punk I'm roughing up ain't worth it. You son of a bitch! I ought to kill you right here! Hey, this punk's not worth it. You're right. You're not worth it. Find a way to channel your <laughs> anger. What I do is throw a shot put into a crowd and make it look like an accident. I forgot to make it look like an accident. <laughs> nice, so I'll blow my burps the other way. <laughs> You're funny. Oh, thanks. Usually people just find me awkward. I have a hard time with small talk. Did you find everything you were looking for? Yeah, I did all right for a guy who just had his first homosexual experience with his guitar teacher. <laughs> hey, people got along just fine for thousands of years without AA. Just like they got along for thousands of years without religion. I like you and have no reason not to. I like you and have no reason not to. Hey, did you hear about that magic baby that was born in Bethlehem? Oh my god! say about this show is it is crazy i am watching it and i'm fully aware that it's crazy but it's crazy in a good way and that's what's weird about it do you know what i mean you're watching it like i'm finding it funny but do you know what that shows a nice creative joke one thing i do have to say is i just wish i was that creative sometimes i watch a show and i'm like why can't i think of jokes like this off the cuff like these writers how are you thinking of this because i don't know if you're a psychopath or if you're just a funny person like i can't tell i can't draw the line between are you a psychopath or are you you know normal or is it somewhere in between because some of these jokes are crazy and you know yeah it's funny don't get me wrong but to be the one thinking of it i'm like i don't know what's going on in your brain and i kind of want to know then i kind of don't want to know it's one of those isn't it do you know what i mean and i don't know why i thought of that or why i rambled about that but that's just how i feel about this show when i watch it <laughs> You should always fight for what you believe in, like Patrick Henry. Give me liberty or give me death. <laughs> oh, that was easy. I know, right? Ryan wanted to give him liberty. You do the paperwork, Ryan. <laughs> All right, we'll come to dinner. But I want you to know I'm very skeptical about this whole thing. Oh, that's okay. Uh, listen, I was skeptical about traveling to Mexico. 
I took one step outside the resort. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's the end of that video. Do you know what? Overall, I would say it's a very absurd show, isn't it? But it's kind of like absurd in a good way in which you laugh because it's so crazy. And do you know what though? It's very creative and I admire creativity because whoever thinks of those jokes and, and like the visuals for it and the stories and stuff, great. Like, and the characters. Whoever thought of the characters did a great job. And like the look of the characters and just everything about the show, whoever thought of it, it's, it's top notch. It's amazing. It's cool. It's creative. And I love it. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and please turn on the notification bell. Goodbye.